A British Army veteran will face murder charges over the killing of two people back in 1972 during a civil rights demonstration in Northern Ireland known as Bloody Sunday. Another 16 people allegedly involved will face no action, with prosecutors citing ins insufficient evidence. 13 people died and 15 were injured when British paratroopers opened fire at protesters in the Irish city of Derry. Demonstrators were rallying against a government law to imprison people without trial. We go live now to Mick Fealty, editor of leading Northern Irish current affairs blog, Slugger O'Toole. You're very welcome to the program. Now, what's your reaction to today's charges against the former paratrooper? Well, I think uh, the first reaction is just to note the dignity of the families involved, um, because there were something like 17 um, soldiers who were on duty that day who were all investigated with the, the, the public prosecutor's office looking at the evidence, weighing it. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of disappointment because only one of those soldiers will face prosecution, despite the fact that 13 died on the day, uh, another, four, another one died some months afterwards. And there were something like 26 shootings altogether of unarmed civilians on, on that particular day back in 1972. So I think, and the dignity of the families, I think is particularly important because the legacy of something like 3,500 deaths means that there are an awful lot of other victims, both of state forces, but also anti-state forces and illegal uh, loyalist paramilitaries who have outstanding cases and who feel that their lives and their cases have been ignored just as much as the Derry families. As you mentioned, given that the 16 others will face no charges, does that make this a bit of an empty victory? It's not, not in that sense. I mean, it remains to be seen this is only a decision to go for prosecution. I think it's a victory in a sense for the stoicism of the, the Derry families uh, for pushing it through to a point. But I think what it also illustrates is that justice delayed is justice denied. The evidential tra trail 47 years after these people were killed is bound to be cold. And that will be the case in many of the cold cases uh, that are now um, going into uh, into the the inquest queue of, of many families who want to find out the, uh, the the truth. But it is a moral victory in the sense that at least they've got this far. They've also announced a statement, a very measured statement, saying that um, should their scrutiny of the, the DPP's office falls short, they will look for a judicial review. They will even take appeals as far as the High Court and beyond. Uh, so I, I think there's some way to go in all of this, but at least the principle has been breached that no security force members are to be investigated. And I think that is a moral victory for the families. And what do you think about Britain's Defence Secretary offering full support to the accused officers? Well, the Defence Sec Secretary probably feels some moral ob obligation since, ultimately speaking, he is responsible in political terms for the British Armed Forces. Um, uh, and so he may feel that on a personal level. He may also feel that his office demands that. Where I take issue with some of the statements he and some of his cabinet colleagues have made in the past is the idea that some form of amnesty can be extended to security forces that would not also be extended to members of illegal organisations who carried out bombings, who carried out the mass execution of uh, civilians throughout, throughout the war. If you give an amnesty to one set of people, you must by... Uh, by human rights law, extend it to everyone, and I don't think that uh, I, I don't think he's I don't think that is a defensible or a justifiable position. Now, one brother of a Bloody Sunday victim says he's relieved that the veteran will be prosecuted. Do you think that reflects the Northern Irish public opinion as a whole? No, because as with all of these uh, stories of victims, um, there are differing levels of sympathy depending on which political side uh, you're on. My own personal view is that, that none of these people, whether they be victims of the British security forces, the provisional IRA, uh, or the various uh, loyalist organizations, none of these victims volunteered to be victims. And all of them should be held in some kind of equal esteem. One of the great 
failures, in my view, of the peace process or the so-called peace process is that most of the victims and their, their welfare has been swept aside for, uh, for matters of political expedience on all sides and, and very often are used as political footballs, uh, f football uh, by supporters of one faction or another uh, to prove that their case was more uh, or, or less moral than the other. Earlier, you used the word unjustifiable. In 2010, then-PM David Cameron called these killings unjustifiable. Have British authorities done enough in the eyes of the victims' families? Uh, and if not, what more do they want to see? What can they expect to see, if anything? Well, I think it, it, we have to take a case-by-case case case account. Even though there's a prosecution uh, in, in train, we can't presume that that person is guilty, but I do think that there is a relief, and and uh, and that brother of the victim is is probably expressing a very deeply felt reflex that we must see how this goes forward. At least, uh, I mean, there is an account in a British conservative newspaper or magazine called The Spectator uh, by Douglas Murray, who 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 says in there that he spent time at the, the Savile Inquiry, which took years to investigate the, uh, the, these events. Um, and he said that this particular um, soldier, Soldier F, as he is referred to, the names are not given, um, that, that Soldier F, he felt, was an unwilling uh, contributor to that inquiry. Uh, and, and I think the, the families will feel uh, that at least uh, due process has been done where it can be done. And they will work, I think, to ensure that that, that that goes further. The difficulty, I think, is not so much in uh, families who are able to get justice or seen justice to be done. It's in the vast majority of cases where justice will not be seen to be done. And we see in the failure to get sufficient evidence in this case that the, 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 the rules of evidence are against the victims and the families of victims. When a, when a trail goes cold, it, it is remarkably difficult um, to, to pick that up and deliver the justice that people so richly deserve. McFealty, editor of the Slugger O'Toole blog, thank you so much for your insights and your time today.